Hi, this is Nadine with Do-It-Yourself Sweets. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a German chocolate cake. The first thing we're going to do is we've got some German chocolate here and we're going to pour this boiling water on top of the German chocolate. And then we're just going to stir it until it is all melted. So. It may take a few minutes for it to melt, but we want to have this ready so that when we start making the cake, mixing the cake up, this will already be in the liquid form because that's the form we're going to knead it in. Now, before I did this though, I did turn the oven on to preheat it, and I did get the pans and I sprayed them down with a um, spray that also has flour in it. I like using a floured spray better than uh, putting the shortening and then flouring on because it's just easier and more convenient. The other thing I often do when I'm making cakes, if it's got a flat bottom and not a shaped cake, is I will put parchment paper in the bottom of the cake pan. This really helps make it so it does not stick to the bottom of the pan. Now, as you can see, there's still lumps in there. So I'm just going to keep stirring it until all of the chocolate is melted. And then I'll be ready to move on to the next step. This is now totally melted. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to set this aside over here by my mixer so that when I'm ready to dump it in, it will be ready to go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our flour and our cocoa powder and our salt and baking soda and we're going to put it in a bowl and we're just going to stir it up just enough to mix it all in. And then we're just going to stick this over there too and it's going to be ready for when we need that. Now the next step we have is the recipe wants us to separate the, the eggs. So I'm just going to take my eggs and I'm going to separate them so that the yolks and the whites are not together. So I just make sure those are separated. And so I will be back with you as soon as I have all of my eggs separated. And then I'll show you the next thing that we're going to do. So go ahead and separate your eggs also. Now that I have the eggs separated, I'm going to stick my egg whites over here and my egg yolks over here. Because they will both be used in our cake, but they're put in at different times. Now we're ready to mix the butter and the sugar. So I'm going to add the butter which I have brought to room temperature into the bowl and then I'm going to add the sugar and then we're going to beat it for one to two minutes on a medium high speed so that they're well beat. So let me just get the rest of the butter in and the sugar So now I'm mixing the butter and the sugar. I put them in the bowl and I've got it on um, medium high and I'm going to mix it for one to two minutes. And then I will be back with you to show you what we do after that is mixed for one to two minutes. Now I am going to mix the egg yolk and I'm going to put them in just one at a time to mix in. So once you see the one is mixed in, just put another one in and just slowly do it until you have all of the egg yolks in there. Now I want 
to just turn this off long enough so that I can make sure everything is pushed down in there, scrape the sides. So I want to make sure these are mixed well. And then I am going to just mix it again for about another minute on that speed. Well, a few seconds. And then I'm going to turn the speed down to low. And then I'm going to add this chocolate that I melted. I'm going to stop this and put this up just so I can get it all in there. And then I'm going to also add the vanilla. Now this I want to mix on a low speed. And I'm just going to mix until it's well mixed in there. And I'll try to kind of push, oops, and try to push the stuff down that's sticking to the sides. And then I'll start it again. Now once this is mixed in, I'm going to alternate adding the buttermilk and the flour. I'm going to want to do this in thirds, as in the flour is going to go in in three portions, the buttermilk is only going to take two portions because I want to add, start and end with the um, flour mixture. And I don't like it to make a big mess, so I usually turn it off and I just lift this up so that I can get some of this in. I want to try to get about one third of the flour mixture in there. You don't have to measure exact, just kind of eyeball it. And then because this is a dry mixture, I still want that on a nice low speed so it doesn't go flying all over the place. And then as soon as that gets mixed in, I'm going to add half of my milk. Then let that get mixed in. And then I'll probably stop and scrape down and then add another third of the flour and then the other milk. And then I'll add the last portion of the flour. So I'll continue doing that and I'll get back as soon as I have all of it mixed in. I've added the last bit of flour, so now I'm just going to mix it till it's all mixed in. Get a little bit scraped down. Make sure it's all getting down in there. So now that that is all mixed, we're just going to let that sit for a minute and we're going to beat up the egg whites. So now I have another bowl and I have another mixer. Um, so I'm going to take the egg whites and I'm just going to dump them into this bowl. And I'm going to mix it until it forms nice soft peaks. I will come back and show you what we do after we have nice soft peaks. So now this is forming some nice soft peaks right there. We're going to take the cake batter that we mixed up and we're going to use our spatula and we're going to add about half of this to our cake batter. And then we're just going to kind of stir it in to our cake batter. Work it in carefully. 
<laughs> and then once we get this completely stirred in so you don't see any egg whites, they're totally mixed in, you then will take the second half of the egg whites and do the same thing. This helps create a light and airy texture to our German chocolate cake. So I'm going to add the rest of the egg whites in and then just do the same thing, fold these ones in. Now you notice folding is not a vigorous stirring, it's just kind of turning the batter over on itself so that it gets mixed in. Because we're not trying to incorporate a lot more air and we also don't want to deflate the egg whites. So we're just slowly turning the batter, that's what they call folding it in, until we no longer see any of the egg whites. So now we're going to fill the uh, cake pan for the German chocolate cake. And as I said, this is a three-tier cake. So um, you can use three two-inch cakes, or you could use um, a couple of the three-inch cakes. I'm actually going to use two two-inch cakes, and then because I don't have three two-inch cakes, I'm going to put the third one in here so it won't seem as full when you're looking at the cake. So what I'm going to do is I just want to put some batter in each of the cake. And you want to make sure you put an equal amount in each cake. We are going to level the cake batters out once it's uh, baked, but it's still best to try for cooking purposes and having them all cook, be done at the same time to put the same amount as close as you can into each cake. So I just kind of dump and lick and eyeball it. And if it looks like one has too much, then I'll scoop a little bit out of the one and put it in the other. And at the end, if I have some left over, then I'll evenly distribute amongst the cakes. Because I like to try to make my cakes as close to even so they will get done cooking at the same time. So there's two of them, and here's my third one. And as I said, this one, I'm just going to kind of look at the level up the side of the pan because it's deeper. So I'm not able to look so much at... Uh, how much room is left at the top on this one. So that looks like they're pretty even. This one looks like it might need a little bit more. So I'm going to put a scoop, another scoop in there. And then I'm just going to scrape and put a teeny bit more in each of them. So put a little bit more in there because I like to use up all my batter. And a little bit more in there. And then I just like to make sure it's kind of smooth out. And then one thing I like to do with cakes is I like to try to get some of the air bubbles out. So I'll just go like this and get some of the air bubbles out of the cake. Now because this is only an 8 inch cake, I do not need to put a core or anything in there. It's, It'll cook evenly without anything in there. So now I'm ready to put my cakes in the oven. And this should only have to cook for about a half an hour. I might start checking it at about 20, 25 minutes. And I am cooking it in a 350 degree oven. So I will get come back and show you what we do after the cake is done cooking. So I have finished cooking the cakes. And they're now on the cooling racks to cool. So I'm going to let them cool till they are completely cool and then we will tort them. That means we're going to level them out and we're going to be adding the um, German chocolate frosting filling in between the layers. We're also going to be putting some ganache on the top of this before we put the top thing of the German chocolate filling. So while this is cooling, we will go ahead and make the German chocolate cake filling. Now we are going to make the German chocolate icing. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to combine the sugar and the milk. and the butter and the egg yolk and the vanilla and we're going to cook this over a medium heat for about 10 minutes, stirring constantly. Um, we're gonna cook it till it thickens, basically. And as I said, that sh is, should take about 10 minutes. And you wanna, you wanna make sure that the milk doesn't curd, and that nothing burns. And so that's why we're going to be stirring it constantly. Now we're not doing a vigorous stir as if we're mixing, beating something together. We're just doing a gentle stir, keeping the stuff moving, keeping all of the stuff moving so nothing will sit in one spot too long and burn because we don't want the eggs or the milk or anything to burn. And we do want to make sure that that butter is making, is not floating, but actually making a connection with the bottom of the pan because the bottom of the pan is going to be Hotter and it's going to help that butter melt faster. We also started with butter that was at room temperature. And by starting with butter that is at room temperature, um, it doesn't take as long for it to melt either. And so once it starts thickening, I will come back and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so you can see that now it is boiling. Um, we want it to thicken up a little bit more, so we're still going to keep stirring, making sure it doesn't boil too much, but we want it to thicken up so it'll be spreadable when we print it on our cake, because as you can see right now, it's still very liquidy. Hasn't been the full 10 minutes yet. It said, the recipe says that it will take about 10 minutes. Um, I think it's going to be thick enough pretty close to that 10 minutes, so I'm going to stir just another couple of minutes until it's as thick as we want it to be. So this is looking pretty good. It's been about 10 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it off of the heat and it'll thicken up some more once it cools. And I'm just going to dump my coconut and my pecans into this mixture. And then I'm going to stir it. But I don't want it on the heat anymore. So I've moved it off of the heat. And I'm just going to stir it. Mix it all in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this into a bowl. And the reason we want to transfer it into a bowl is so that it will cool faster. Because this pan will help it to stay warm. And we don't want it to stay warm. We can't spread this onto the cake until it is um, at room temperature. So I'm going to get a plastic bowl to put this in so it can come to room temperature. Now I'm just going to take this and dump it into this bowl. And let this cool to room temperature. Once it's cool, it will be ready to go on the cake. So now that our cake has cooled, we're going to level it and tort it. We want three sections for our cake. And I'm going to make my each of my layers about an inch thick. So I'm going to set this at one inch. And whenever I do wedding cakes, that is what I set mine at. Because by the time you have three tiers with the filling at one inch, you're talking almost four inches of cake. And that's a big, 
thick piece of cake. So one inch per tier is going to be enough. So you see, I'm just carefully, my blade is a very sharp blade. So I just very carefully go through it and then I lift the excess off. And then this is all ready for me to decorate. So I'm gonna slide this over here because I need to do two more cakes. And I'm gonna bring this one right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing whoops, with this cake. And then I'm just gonna slide this one over here and do the exact same thing with this cake. Then I will have all three tiers of my cake. Here is my cake board, and I'm just going to take the cake, and I'm going to center it on the cake board. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start layering it, putting some of that German chocolate frosting that I made earlier here, and then I will put the next tier on, and then I will put some more German frosting on that, and then I'll put the next tier on, and then that tier, before I put the German chocolate frosting on, I'm going to pour some ganache on it, which will kind of drizzle down the sides. And then I'll put that in the fridge just so that it can harden up really quick. Not too hard, but I don't want it runny. And then I'll put the last layer of the German chocolate frosting on that so that the cake will just look and taste delicious. So let's go ahead and start putting the frosting on it. So I know that this has to last for three tiers. So I'm just gonna spoon it on, spread it around, making sure I don't use more than about a third of that frosting. And I don't have to use a whole third. If I have some left over, that's okay. But I wanna make sure I do not use more than a third because I do want to make sure I have enough for all of the tiers and when I put you don't have to get it all the way to the edge because when I put the next tier on it'll kind of mush that out to the edge so I've got that one on then I'm going to stick this one on top of that now, one thing I did with this particular cake tier is I don't know if you noticed when I was cutting it, but it had one side where for some reason in the pan, it didn't have any cake. I don't know how that happened because there was nothing there. So what I did is I took some of the extra from the other cake and I just cut away a little bit from this so there'd be a ledge to put it on and I just pieced another cake into that. And so when you're eating it, you won't even be able to tell. As you can see, you can kind of see it now because I don't have that frosting on. But when I put that frosting on here, you're not even going to be able to tell that piece is there. So a lot of times, when something doesn't quite turn out right on your cake, there are things you can do to fix it where no one will ever know what happened. And they'll just be praising you at how good and beautiful your cake looks. Okay, so that one, I probably need to save the rest of that for the top. So I'm going to spread this around here. Make sure that's spread around. Mm -hmm. Let's put that back up here. Get just a teeny bit more for right here. Now, I'm going to put this last tier on. And you'll notice you'll have some that's oozing out of the cake. And that's okay because it kind of makes it look nice and pretty. So I'm just going to put this last tier on. Now on this tier, I don't want to put this on yet. I'm going to put that layer of ganache on it. So I'm going to show you how to make the ganache that we're going to put on this. So to make our ganache, you're not going to believe how easy it is. It's just a matter of heating up some cream and pouring it over the chocolate. The secret is, is you got to get the heat cream to be just to boiling. 
You don't want it to boil a long time. You want it just to be boiling. And you want the chocolate to be broken up basically into the same size. So when you buy the chocolate in the bars like this, and there's a lot of brands out there, um, you can pretty much just break them into this size chunks and it'll work great. If you want to buy the big blocks of chocolate, you can also do that. With that, you'd need to use a knife to cut them down. Um, you can use Melties. You could use chocolate chips. I suggest using a chocolate that is a higher content of the cocoa butter and the, fat, the chocolate fat. Um, this one says it is 56% of the cocoa. And you want it to be at least that. A lot of times when I make ganache, I actually use the bittersweet chocolate. And by the time you add the milk to it, it's not really that bittersweet. But it's got a little bit higher content. But this one is just right where it should be. Don't use a milk chocolate because that's not enough cocoa. It needs to be at least a 56% cocoa. So to make this recipe, I am going to need 12 ounces of the chocolate and 12 ounces of the cream. So it's like equal amounts. So I'm, I've got eight of my ounces done, and I'm just going to break up the last box of chocolate because you want the chocolate ready so that once you have the cream heated, you can pour it right over the chocolate, and then you're just going to stir it until it is completely melted. And then if you're pouring it on the cake like we're going to for the German chocolate cake, you would um, be ready to use it right after it's done. So, but this is ready for when the cream is cooked. I'm going to start by giving this a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, I'm going to look at it, stir it, see how hot it is, and then probably from that point on, I will just give it 30 second bursts till we get it just to boiling, because that's all the hotter we want to get it, is to the boiling stage. We don't want to have it boil over, we don't want to boil for a long time, we just want it to come to a boil. Now, every microwave is going to be different, and where you live is also going to make a difference, because if you live at a high altitude, or low altitude, it's going to make a difference on how fast this comes to a boil. And depending on the wattage of your microwave, how new it is, how old it is, it also can make a difference on how quickly this comes to a boil. So you just want to make sure, oh, it is boiling. See, I saw, I was looking and I could see it just started boiling. So I went ahead and I stopped. This took just a little over two minutes. I want to pour this right onto that chocolate. And I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to let it just sit there for a minute. All right. It has now been a minute. So I'm just going to take my whisk and I'm going to whisk this. And you'll notice it's kind of goopy and the milk is really runny still, or the cream, I should say, is really runny. But as I mix this and whisk it, you're going to see it slowly transform into this milky, goopy stuff into a shiny, rich chocolate ganache. See, it's starting to get darker. And as simple as that, there you have the chocolate ganache. Yum, yum. To spread it on the cake, I don't want to use the whisk. In fact, I'm just stirring to make sure it's all mixed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get like a ladle and I'm going to spread it on my cake. So this isn't going to take all of this. It's just going to take a little bit. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to start in the middle and go around and get it all on there. And I want it to just naturally drip down the edges. And I don't want all of the edges covered, all of the cake covered. I just want this to naturally drip down the edges. Yum, yum. 
and it's as simple as that. There's the cake with the ganache on it, and you can see the German chocolate sticking out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this cake in the refrigerator, and I'm going to let it set up for, oh, half an hour, 45 minutes, until this is set up enough that when I put this top layer of the German chocolate frosting on it, this won't smear all over. It'll be set up enough that it'll stay there. So I'll be back with you when this is set up enough to show you how to finish it up. Our cake is almost done. So now I'm ready to finish up the cake. So I'm just going to take the rest of this frosting and spread it on the top. We let the ganache set up enough that it, it's not hard, but it's set up enough that we're able now to spread this on the top. And I do want to make sure that the top of the cake is totally covered with this German chocolate icing. And if a little bit drips down the side, that's okay too. This is a cake where not all of the side is frosted. And so now we have our delicious German chocolate cake. This is Nadine with DIY Sweets by Nadine. Enjoy!